I want to welcome you back to Words of the Master, Part 2. And the words of the Master means the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the Master. He was the ultimate Master. And these are his words that we're going to be covering in our message for this series, Part 2. Let's continue. Here's our topic, Enthroning the Word of God. Enthroning the Word of God. What do we mean when we say enthroning? Well, if we kind of take a look at the word I-N-G and take the word enthrone, that means an action, an action of putting on the throne someone in our life. We hope our mind is on the throne. We gather that information over a period of time. We call it education. And we put our mind on the throne in our life to control everything. But we know our brain is ultimately on the throne. And the brain sends signals to the mind. And the mind tells us, based on our learning, what to do. And most of it is involuntary. But the mind is on the throne. And we're talking about putting something else on the throne in our life. We're talking about enthroning the spirit. The spirit of the living God. And then there's the word resurrected. Resurrected. And what are we talking about here? Resurrected. When we resurrect something, that means to bring it back, to to return, to bring it from a state of ultimate non-existence to a state of existence. The resurrected. When we resurrect something, we more or less rebuild, bring it back. That means it had to first die, and then it was resurrected. And then we talk about the Word. What do we mean when we say the Word? Obviously, at this particular point, God, through Jesus Christ, is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then we talk about the Word being made flesh. And when it was made flesh, it became Jesus Christ. So when we take a look at our topic as a whole, enthroning, placing on the throne in our life, a spirit, the spirit of what? A resurrected, meaning Jesus Christ, who was crucified, died, and was buried, and was resurrected on the third day. The resurrected word, the resurrected Jesus Christ, who was made flesh, God's only begotten son. Enthroning the resurrected word means to put God on the throne in our life. Let's look at our text. Here's where we're coming from. From that time on, Jesus began to proclaim. He began to preach. What is that time on? What are we talking about? We're talking about the period prior to Jesus' early ministry, before he started his ministry. From that time on, that time being his baptism by John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the forerunner. He was the seed planter. He prepared the way for Jesus. And from that time on, after his baptism, after the heavens opened up and God descended in the presence of a dove and said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And from that time on, Jesus began to proclaim. He began to preach. He began to make known. He began to share with those who would listen. What did he share? He shared the same thing that John the Baptist preached. He said, repent, turn around, return to God for the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is a place where God is, a place where God is on the throne. The kingdom of heaven and heaven is within, heaven is without, heaven is all around. The kingdom, the world of the spirit is at hand, has come near. Matthew 4 17. Let's continue. We open our message with a discussion about the problem I see. The problem I see is that there are a lot of things on the throne in our life. There are a lot of people perhaps on the throne. There are a lot of possessions on the throne. What are we talking about? We're talking about things on the throne. What is up here? We take a look. We take a look here. We got money. Money is on the throne in a lot of our lives. We work 24-7, some of us, to make money. But notice what this depiction is all about. It's a hole. It's sort of like a warp. 
where money just kind of sinks into a black hole. It just disappears. And that's what I'm sure your paycheck seems to do, as well as the money that you are able to accumulate. Those of you who didn't inherit your wealth, or if you earn your wealth, you're probably saving it or investing it or trying to get a return on it. And then there's TV, television, media. That's on the throne. Did you know that children watch, many of them, between 8 and 12 hours of TV if you let them? Some of us watch far too much television. And the throne sometimes has media on it. And as you can't walk around or see kids, young people, a lot of us adults, on our handheld devices. When I say television, I'm talking about all electronic devices. And those devices, if you add up the amount of time that you spend on the phone, on your iPod, on your iPad, on your computer, on uh, whatever your electronic devices may be, many hand on your phone. But let's not forget the phone. The phone has become a take all and it has all hundreds of applications on it that can keep you occupied 24 7. And then the family might be on the throne. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's great to have a great family, but some of us, our family is number uno, even in front of God. We put our family on the throne. And, of course, I'm partial to my own family. I think I love my kids, and I want them to have everything that I didn't have and more. And But not to the point where they're on the throne in my life. Not to the point where they have become the resurrected word in my life. Now we get down to the job. Now, if you take a look at the amount of time you spend working or thinking about work or going to work or preparing for work, your job is on the throne or position or your business. And if you take a look at these things individually, you'll be able to see if you add up the number of hours in the day that you spend with these things, you'll be surprised how many hours you spend concerned, worrying about work. And then there's the house. The house is on the throne in a lot of our lives because most of us, that's our biggest investment. We take care of our house. We spend a lot of time decorating our house. We spend a lot of time taking care of it, uh, making sure that it will last, making sure the taxes are paid, making sure the mortgage is paid, making sure that it is the most beautiful house in the neighborhood if we could. This is certainly an attractive house. The house is on the throne. To some of us, our car or cars is on the throne. We keep it washed. We keep it clean. We should. But we spend a lot of time either driving it, pampering it. Some of us spend more time on our car than we do on ourselves or on our family. The car is on the throne. And down here is vacation, trips, travel. We include the suitcase with the travel stickers on it. Some of us, we can't miss going on a vacation, taking a trip, uh, and again, nothing wrong in it, but it's on the throne in a lot of our lives. We live to travel. We live to take vacation. We live for the time when we can visit some foreign land. And here you see of family having a great time, and to a certain extent, they work all year, or two years, or three years, so that they can enjoy the time together. Again, nothing wrong in it. But the issue becomes, we're enthroned everything but Jesus in our life. And that's the challenge that we face. But we need to make sure that Jesus is on the throne in our life. Here's the problem. The problem is this. There are three ways of enthroning. We've described the problem, putting anything and everything on the throne in our life but Jesus. And there are three ways of enthroning the resurrected word. There's three ways of placing on the throne in our life Jesus Christ. Here's the first way. The first way is we have to stop, return to God. That means repent, return to God, and answer his call. The proclamation of Jesus was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In order to repent, we have to stop. You can't turn a train around unless we stop it. And then once we stop, we have to turn around and return to God. We have to make sure God is on the, stone, on the throne in our life. And that's answering the call. That's answering the call. So we have to stop, return, and answer the call. Second, we need to install the word 
through witnessing. That means if God's on the throne, if he's been installed, that means the place on the throne in our life, we place the word, Jesus Christ, Jesus is the word, the word made flesh. If we install the word on the throne in our life, then we have to witness to that fact. Third, we have to crown the ascension of God by experiencing and seeing the kingdom right now. That simply means that when God's on the throne in our life, the kingdom of heaven is now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but right now. And we have to crown that ascension. We have to crown that coming. We have to crown that being of God by experiencing through sight, new eyes, the kingdom right now. Stop. Change. Whoa. These are all symbols of placing God on the throne. We have to first stop, as we said. In order to turn the train around, we have to stop. We have to stop, and it always referred to, once we stop, we got to change. Don't just stop. Then we have to return. Once we turn, that adds to the change. And then last, we have to answer. Stop. Return. Answer. You can see the return here. You can see the answer here. And you can see stopping up here. The second thing we need to do is install the risen word. How do we do that? How do we install the risen word? We first witness to God's presence, his power in our life. How do we witness to the salvation of God? We witness to the salvation of God by sharing with others that we are being saved and that if they are lost, if, they're, if they have other things, places, people on the throne in their life, then they too are lost or are being challenged to receive the salvation of the Lord. So we have to be able to witness. We have to witness also to the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our life. So we install the risen word by witnessing to our own salvation, and then we witness that Jesus Christ is on the throne in our life. Here's the bottom line. We enthrone the word of God by crowning the ascension of God in our life. We crown this ascension of God in, my, in our life by seeing the kingdom now and in the world to come. We crown the ascension of God. That means the coming of God. That means the placing of God. We crown that ascension. We anoint that ascension. We let it be known who the Father is, who the God is in our life, and we crown that ascension like placing on the throne, like doing a, doing a pageantry when a king is installed. We place the crown on our Heavenly Father that's on the throne in our life. And we do that by seeing the kingdom. That means our life has been changed. That means our spirit has been changed. Now we can do all those things for ourselves that we could not do before. We can forgive. We can love unconditionally. We can experience the new world, the Christian world, the God world right here and right now. It all adds up to this. Christ is still proclaiming repent. Christ is still preaching return. Christ is still saying right here and right now, I'm waiting for you. Here's a question. What is your answer? Are you ready to place God on the throne in your life? Are you ready to really open the door to your heart and soul to God? I hope so. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to place you on the throne in our life. We repent of our sins and return to you right now. We believe that you died for our sins. And because you died, we have this opportunity. Allow us to place you on our throne in our life and thus live in you 
forever and ever.